devotion in the spiritual sense is surrender to the spiritual divine, to God. Of course, there appears to be many kinds of devotion and surrender and of things to surrender and devote yourself to. But in the practice of devotion, everything you do or are concerned with participates in spiritual surrender. There is a different quality to your actions, your endeavors, perhaps a centeredness, a peace, a sense of presence and tranquility. Now, the problem for most of us discussing devotion is acceptance, all acceptance, the total acceptance of all arising forms. You know, for a long time, we had discovered this word from India, the Sanskrit word Maya. In trying to understand the relative and the absolute worlds, the realms of gods, the realms of the human, interpersonal relationships, and the divine thought. We thought of Maya as unreal, illusion. Then we learned Maya actually means the reflection of the divine in space and time, not illusion. And here is the problem. If this relative world in which you and I live is the reflection of the divine realm, then everything here, all entities, all beings, actions, events, everything, is divine and should be accepted with reverence and love. Otherwise, you are attempting to fracture God, which is the traditional term for the all, the totality, the divine. Not always so easy to do, and yet the spiritual practitioner of devotion, the devotee, rises to the challenge, even when the world of appearances falls short of perhaps being acceptable. This world of appearances is where you're situated just now. These appearances include everything, all the many and various details of the circumstance of your life, the context in which you abide. To leave here is almost unthinkable. Fantasies of death, suicide, insanity, are the closest you could get to the very idea, losing your grip on life, your will to live, your enthusiasm and your motivation to go on. These are the kinds of images and thoughts that arise in response to the spiritual instruction to leave this world. Yet when you do, truly do, you discover another world, another existence, before which the one you held so tightly onto pales into insignificance. This is because the world we create, maintain and cling to is not the real. It is full of objects that are born and which die. It is full of meaninglessness, 
futility and only human fashioned purpose. In the reality of the divine, meaning, purpose and truth abound and all intellectual restlessness and uncertainty is transcended. You are liberated. You are free. And it's not possible anywhere else. So what you seek or devote yourself to tends to be pointless until you discover true desire, the object your deeper heart seeks, until you surrender the search itself, until you muster the courage, the determination to discard what you do possess and are attached to in a million complex ways for one simple thing. Truth. And only truth satisfies the heart, the soul, and the spirit. The way is through surrender. Good intentions, vague cravings, and listless application are never enough. Seekers struggle in their spiritual practice. Strive to establish spiritual discipline. Desire spiritual attainment, but are reluctant to pay the price. If you find you're one of them, try to relax. For your ego has engaged in the spiritual process, so you will suffer a perpetual stalemate. Nothing will ever happen for you, spiritually. You will simply suffer under the pretense of being a spiritual journeyer or a wayfarer, as the Sufis say. Your ego has engaged with spirituality, which is a contradiction, rather like saying a bird flies underwater or that you can hear the sound of your dinner just doesn't make any sense. It's not real. But there is a way out of the predicament. And the way is devotion, which is itself the flowering of awareness. Awareness is the preeminent practice of the seeker intent on attaining the awakening of the first stage in inner work, the process of self-discovery. In the first stage, you must practice devotion also. Devotion to yourself. The object and the exclusive focus of your inner work practice is self, self, self. It's extremely selfish in the beginning. And yet selfishness brings you to selflessness. Find the courage to be selfish and in time selflessness blooms in you unexpectedly, spontaneously. 